What's up? It's Yo Yo the House Lady. Thank you for stopping by my channel where I kick it with you about all things real estate, all things real estate investing. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to assemble your real estate investing team if you're just starting out. Disclaimer, of course, these are my personal experiences. It is very important for you to do your own research, to assemble your own team of professionals. Real estate investing involves lending, borrowing, contracts, etc. So it's very important for you to have your team of professionals as you uh, endeavor into real estate investing wars, if you will. Um, so your real estate investing team should consist of a number of professionals. Um, as usual, I have my trusty whiteboard in tow because I want to cover a lot of information and because I love real estate so much, I really can talk about real estate ad nauseum. So I keep my whiteboard so that I can refer back to it just in case I'm getting off track because I just, like I said, love to talk about real estate so much. So let's talk about what or who your, uh, your real estate investing team should consist of. If you are going to buy property, renovate it, and then rent it out, once you get to three, four, five, six, and up properties, chances are you're going to want a management team. Now, there are people that manage their properties on their own, but sometimes it just helps just to manage everything better, to have a team to do it so that your uh, team is your tenant's point of reference instead of having to call you all the time when something breaks down. But that's really just for people who um, are going to renovate properties and rent them out. So you're run, you have a running roster of, of tenants and so it helps to have a management team. There's also your legal team. You're gonna to wanna to have um, a real estate attorney. That real estate attorney may own a title company. And of course, you're going to have to have your uh, property insurance uh, agent because chances are the lender that you're borrowing from is going to require you to have uh, property insurance on that investment. And it just makes sense that you would. You wanna insure your investment whenever you can. Um, then you have your money team, of course. So, you know, chances are you're going to be borrowing. And uh, whether that's a hard money lender, conventional lender, whether it's private money, you got to have a money team. Um, also, there's your real estate agents. Um, uh, I always mention that I am a realtor, but it's very important that I say you do not need to be a realtor to start investing in real estate. I uh, was a real estate investor before I ever became a realtor. So don't let that hang you up into moving forward because I get question, asked the question all the time. Well, do you think I should go and get my real estate license first? That's just a matter of choice. But whether you have to or not, no, you do not have to. Now, obviously, if you have your real estate license, there are things about the trade that you know that the average lay person doesn't know. There's information and, and I guess, um, systems, if you will, that you have access to that the average person who hasn't paid into that system doesn't have access to. But the, que the answer is no, you do not have to have a real estate license to start investing in real estate. But it would help you out if you had a realtor that you partnered with and um, you could call and say, hey, I'm interested in a particular area. Can you give me some information in that area? So it's just good to be in relationship. As a real, real estate investor, if you are not a realtor, it's very good to be in relationship with a real estate agent. And also on your team, which is what I'm going to focus on today, uh, is the rehab team. I want to talk to you about your rehab team because I know that had I known this when I started out, it would have made things a lot easier for me. So your rehab team typically uh, consists of your GC, which is the general contractor, um, subcontractors, uh, your handyman, and then you can have uh, your property inspector property inspector now i want to uh pick that apart a little bit if you hire a gc a general contractor typically it is the gc who's going to hire uh or either has on staff your plumber your electrician heating and cooling people who do structural so if you have a gc and your gc 
can hire out those trades and they would be subcontractors or they are employed by the GC directly. Now, there are plenty of things that you can hire a handyman to do. I mean, as a matter of fact, just about any and everything you can hire a handyman to do if they know how to do it. But let me caution you against that. Leave the handyman work to the handyman and leave the licensed professional work to the licensed professionals. For example, an electrician. You definitely want to have a licensed electrician on your team. Uh, as far as plumbing goes, you want a licensed plumber on your team. Um, you AC, heating and cooling, you want someone that is licensed to do those aspects of the job because it has so many implications. Professionals are held to a higher standard. I mean, just something as simple as continuing education, that lets a professional know what the latest uh, requirements that the, the, of the state or the county, et cetera. It also lets them know if there have been any, any changes in the code. So licensed professionals who are required to take uh, continuing education, they typically know what standards have to be met when they're working on a particular aspect of your job. And that's why it's so important to get licensed professionals. Um, and not just for that reason alone, you also have uh, your, your code compliance and you have your uh, building inspectors that come through your city and they, they know what's going on in the city. They drive through because it's their job. You know, it's your building department uh, inspector's job to know what's going on in the city. And that's, that's the reason why they require you to pull permits because that permit tells them who's doing what and what house and uh, the plans that they have to do it. However, a lot of times, we, and I say we, take from that what you will, have skipped the process of getting someone licensed and figured, oh, it's a small thing. We can just hire, you know, the my uncle to do it, or we can just hire my cousin to do it, or my dad knows how to do that. And that's all well and good until there is a problem or until you have your, uh, your building department inspector driving through the neighborhood because that's his job or her job to know what's going on in the neighborhood and they actually see your contractor's truck in the yard or they see your dad's truck in the yard and they see him going in and out of the house with different materials and it, and then all that inspector has to do is pull that address up and say well wait a minute I see what appears to be electrical work or I, I see what appears to be plumbing work going on and this property does not have a permit that is on file for this work to be done. Well, guess what's going to happen then? You're going to get cited. That work has to stop and then you have to get on the schedule for the inspector to come out and see exactly what's going on and it's possible that that inspector can tell you to tear out a lot of the work that you've done because you have to start all over again to get that work done now. Don't take that lightly because that eats into your time, it eats into your budget, and you want to stay on time with your project because remember, your chances are paying that interest on your loan and paying that loan as soon as you close on it. Um, and so you don't want to waste time in doing things the wrong way and then having to get cited for it and now having to come back, get on the schedule to even have the inspector come out and inspect your work, then submit your permit, have your permit approved, and then get that, get that contractor to uh, get started on the job. And especially with so much going on right now in the way of uh, building, uh, people are backed up, contractors are busy. So once you lock on to a good contractor, a good general contractor, a good subcontractor, you want to put them in a position where it makes it easy for both of you to move forward and execute that work, get in the job and get out of the job and do it right. And I'm gonna tell you this, I know that you'll hear people say, oh, you don't have to get a licensed professional for that. It's, it's something small, you don't have to worry about it. And you can come at night, the, have the contractor come at night. Nobody will know, nobody's working during those hours. I am telling you, do not do that. 
right now, I just want you to give this some thought. All of your neighbors probably have ring cameras. And not only that, the if they live in the neighborhood, chances are they talk to one another. And I'm going to tell you now, your neighbors don't even want to see that you have people coming in and out of your house and you're doing things that are not to code because they will report you because guess what happens when they do when you do that when you do things that are not to code some you can bring down property values so your neighbors don't want to see that either and they may smile in your face every day in the meantime they are on the phone with code enforcement letting them know that you are in that property doing work without a permit or just letting you know letting the uh, property inspector or building inspector part of me know there's work going on at this house. Did you know it? And especially if they are in relationship with the building inspector, because as a part of the building inspector's job, they drive through the neighborhood. They walk your neighborhoods. They talk to the neighbors. They become friendly with the neighbors. And so I don't know if, if neighbors feel like, you know, they, they trust in them. They, they want to tell them what's going on in the neighborhood. So a lot of times it's your very neighbor that's smiling in your face that'll call the property inspector and say, hey, did you know that this was going on at this house? Because guess what? They had to be held to that standard too. So it's their expectation that you will follow those rules. Um, so it's very important to know what your state, your county, your city, local government requires as far as licensed professionals go. And it is important that you get those licensed professionals on your job. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about your rehab professionals, um, I want to talk to you about how I pay them. So no matter what the job is, I typically pay a third, a third, a third. So at the commencement of the job, I pay a third of our agreed upon contract midway through the job i pay another third of that job and then at the end i pay that remaining third now that doesn't always fly because sometimes your work is so intricate that in the beginning of the job you may need an architect come out to come out and those things have to be paid for up front so sometimes you may spend more than a third on the uh, front side of the job, which is not unusual. But typically, you don't give half down on a job. Um, one of the very important things that uh, also relates to that is, one thing that I think I took for granted for quite some time until I learned better is getting references. So you're wondering, how do I put these professionals together? Where do I get them from? I mentioned in another video, you've got to start going to the real estate investor meetings in your area because that's where you're going to meet a lot of the tradespeople. Um, they, they usually come to the meetings and pass out their cards, but also just get referrals from people that you know say hey do you know an electrician and you can follow up with that electrician and make sure that they're licensed hey do you know a plumber you can follow up and check on their license to make sure the license is active in good standing etc you can do those things on your own but it's very important that you get referrals from people you know um i actually uh, worked on a project in a historic district and that historic district had their own uh, neighborhood meetup so they would share the professionals that they use because in a historic district you have to use certain professionals for specific things so you want to find out where get some referrals find out where the professionals in your area are but here's the key to getting a referral the follow-up you actually have to get the referral call that professional once you speak to the professional you now need to ask that professional whether they have references and here's the key call the reference follow up with the reference ask that reference hey have you ever worked with this electrician before they gave me your number they said that they did work on your home or they did work on one of your projects and ask them what their opinion of that professional was. Were, were they timely? Were they fair? Were they honest, et cetera? Were they reliable? Um, follow up, because that's so important. Now, there's been many a times where 
I've gotten referrals, I've called that professional, and I've even hired that professional, but I never called that professional's references. And had I, it would have saved me a lot of, I believe it would have saved me a lot of headache. I don't know what I would have heard when I spoke to the references, but I've worked with professionals and they have been everything but professional. And I think if I had checked those references, I may have heard some of those things. Now, keep in mind, typically people don't give you references that are going to say bad things about them. I mean, let's be realistic, but you just never know what someone may say when you actually follow up with a reference. And you know, some people will try to give you their family members and you just kindly say, look, I prefer you don't give me family members and follow up with the references and see what they have to say about that professional um, because it's going to help you quite a bit in determining whether you're going to hire someone for a job or not especially when you know that your job is under time constraints and then you speak to a reference and they say well yeah he's he's the best at the job because i've had this before oh yeah he is the best that you're gonna find best in our area however he doesn't always show up. So he basically gets it done when he gets it done. Well, you know that you cannot work under those kinds of conditions. So you're gonna have to pass on, on, that, uh, on that referral. Um, but there's plenty out there and you can find them. Just start asking around. I say when you're jumping into uh, real estate investing, you've gotta let everyone know that this is what you do. I don't care who it is, your pastors, your mother's friends, your brother's friends, your whomever, you let everyone know. When you go to the grocery store and you happen to speak to someone, you let them know this is what you do. You'd be surprised on how quickly you'll start getting calls from those people to say, hey, you said you invest in real estate and I just have a question for you. And that question can lead, lead into a whole transaction that you weren't expecting at all. It has happened to me on more than one occasion. All right, let's see what else I want to uh, talk to you about. Okay, so in the uh, contract phase, the executory phase, you are doing a lot of things. You're getting your inspections, you are getting your property inspector to come out to see if you have any structural issues. Um, you are having your insurance company come out, the one that's going to be your prospective insurance company. They may want to inspect the property uh, in order to provide coverage for you. Um, and also, if you live in an area where you require uh, flood insurance, sometimes they send someone out to come and look at the property. Um, but one of the first things that I do when I purchase a property is I get pest control. So pest control is going to be a really key part of your rehab team. Now, when you get your inspection, and that is assuming that you do, and I... Uh, implore you to always get property inspections. Now, I will say this, I have purchased properties on more than one occasion without an inspector, but I want you to understand that part of the reason why I was able to do that without getting a formal property inspection is because I do have experience as a general contractor. And even with my experience as a general contractor, there are still things that, to, that I wouldn't see to the naked eye that it would be beneficial to have an inspection for. So again, it bears repeating, get your inspections done. But once you get your inspections done, a lot of times you can have pest control come out and chances are your inspector may work with the pest control company. But I always get pest control done on any property that I purchase. Now, the reason why I get pest control is chances are when you're getting a heck of a deal, you're getting a property that's been abandoned for a long time, or you're getting a property that's just that hasn't been getting the TLC that the average property deserves. And I have to say that that's not always the case. You can get some properties that are in great shape. However, because you know you want your rehab team to get in that property within 48 to 72 hours of you closing on it, I think just as a courtesy to people that are going to have to go into that property and work, you want to make sure that there are no rodents, no roaches, no, no anything. And I know for me, I would spaz 
out if I went into a property and something ran across my foot. So I know that I'm going to be in the property. I know I'm going to be checking on things at the property and I know I don't want to uh, encounter, have any uh, rodent encounters. So if you don't want to, you know, you don't want your tradesmen to encounter that either. So I would say as a part of your rehab team, definitely uh, start checking out pest control companies and find ones that you're happy with, that you think you would like working with. So pest control is definitely a part of your rehab team. So you have your general contractor, your handyman, you have your uh, property inspector. These are all people that should be a part of your rehab team as you're getting started out. I just did not know that. I did not know the scope of uh, every professional that I would need to pull together at once. And once you get this thing working like a well-oiled machine, it's going to come to you like water off a duck's back. It's going to be so easy. You're, you know when you see a property, you're going to call up your, uh, your inspector and you're going to say, hey, I got a property. I want you to come over and check it out with me or your GC. It just depends on your relationship. Um, and once you start working with them on a regular basis, chances are they can come out for you here and there. Um, a lot of times you have to make it convenient for them because they're not necessarily hired yet. You just want them to come out and take a look, but they know you to be a professional in the area. So they'll come out and they'll take a look for you. So there you have it really. Um, your team of professionals that you need to assemble starting out when you start rehabbing is your pest control company. Very important. One of the first people that you want to get in is your pest control company. You also want to have your uh, inspectors on deck so that you can call them at any time and say, hey, can you come over and look at this property for me? You also want to have your uh, general contractor to come out and say, hey, this is how much this job is gonna cost and this is the kind of time that I'm working with to get it done for you if, if they have the availability and at least they can schedule you in. So you wanna have a, a general contractor as part of your team. You also want to have, um, like I said, your real estate agents um, to just call and say, hey, I found a, a property in this area. Can you do the comparables for me? And you'll hear people say comps. Can you run the comps for me and let me know how much properties in this area are selling for so that I can go ahead and uh, make an offer on this property? And you can make an advise intelligent uh, offer on the property. And a lot of times real estate agents will have no problem doing this even if they're not the listing agent because chances are once you renovate that property and are ready to put it on the market you're going to hire that agent now that's not a hard and fast rule but it's just a courtesy a courtesy in the industry if you have an agent that's helping you out on this property getting you all of the information you need it only it deserves that you would call them and say hey I'm ready to list unless of course you're going to put it on the market for sale by owner so i'm helping you with these comps i'm helping you find this information and um you'll consider me uh to list your property when you're ready to uh when you're ready to list so as far as your team of professionals go i think we've covered um just about everybody that is pivotal in the executory phase of the contract meaning once you go into contract you're under time constraints to get certain things done, your expect inspections, etc. And then once you close on the property, like I said, you want to get pest control done right away. You want to have your GC come in and get the property prepped for the work that needs to be done right away. My suggestion is if you have any roof work that has to be done, you want to start working on that roof first because you don't want to get inside and start doing all of these amazing things to the property, getting prepared to have it rented out or getting it prepared to uh, put back on the market only to have your roof leak uh, onto all of the beautiful work you've done. So if you have any roof issues, I would suggest that you um, you know, address those first. And I'm sure that your GC should uh, be able to tell you the, the order of operation of things so that it would make it a smooth transition and, and make it most cost effective for you. But uh, like I said, if there's anything with the roof, definitely address that right away 
um, because you don't want any roof issues lingering at all. And another thing you need to know when starting out with your uh, rehab team is you want to get into that property and get your utilities going because you're going to have contractors in and out of the property. And so because you're going to have contractors in and out, you want to have your utilities working, your water running, your electricity running, if the electrician says that you know it's safe to have electric on the property they may have to have a generator so that's up to you to verify with the general contractor the licensed contractor or the licensed electrician you want to find those things out because you do want to make it uh, a work environment that's conducive to your contractors getting things done and not having to leave the property to go to the bathroom or leave the property to accomplish something that they could have accomplished there had you had all of your utilities in place. So it's just important to have those things in place as well. And this might sound silly, but one of the other things that you should have at the property as soon as you close on it and you know that your contractors are coming in right away to start working, just have things like bathroom tissue, uh, bleach, hand soap, um, those sorts of things. Just have those things around. Um, just makes it a little a little bit of a cleaner environment if you do that and just keeps it that you know your contractors know that you're thoughtful enough to have those things there um maybe a plastic cups so that they can drink out of and somewhere for them to dispose of you know the, their trash at the end of the day because sometimes they work right through they may eat there and then just continue on with what they're doing as opposed to having to leave the job go get something to eat and come back so you want to have those things there for them just to be mindful so that you can make you can make you know working on your site um, a pleasant experience um, and also one of the most important things and I say that about everything because they're all important but this is very important you must supervise your site site meaning your property don't just hire a general contractor and rely on the general contractor alone to run the whole job. You need to come periodically and check on your job site to just make sure that things are going the way you expect them to, to make sure that windows got closed, um, to make sure doors are locked, to make sure water isn't left running, check your supervise your job site remember this is your property so although the general contractor you have now said okay here's my project i'm putting it into your hands and you expect the general contractor to uh you know ca carry out the job in a certain manner but that does not relieve you of the responsibility of uh supervising your own job so definitely show up because i'm going to tell you things can go awry when contractors think that the owner doesn't ever come around it's sad to say but things can go awry under those circumstances so definitely don't take for granted how important it is for you to stop by that site periodically and you might think to yourself well yeah i'm going to always stop by but once you get three houses four houses and they're all working at the same time that doesn't necessarily happen sometimes you kind of leave one to a contractor to kind of let the contractor do everything and you you rely on the contractor to do everything that's supposed to be done you cannot do that please do not do that make sure you supervise your site that's one of the most important takeaways from today in in assembling your rehab team and starting out supervise your project check back periodically um, and check throughout the house. Don't just go to one room or just the entryway. You want to check everywhere. Just make sure your windows are locked, etc. Things like that. Just, just to know. You need, you need to be uh, aware of what's going on in your property. Um, sometimes you can come back to the job site and you see that the contractors have left trash. Trash meaning their bottles that they've been drinking juice out of or their wrappers that they've eaten their sandwiches out of and you just had pest control done. So you don't want that to happen on your site. So you might have to go to the GC or specifically to the contractor and say, hey, I'm asking you not to leave 
uh, you know, my job site dirty. If you could just pick up behind your guys before at the end of the day every day and I'll leave trash receptacles or trash trash bags, etc. there um, for your convenience. But um, again, make sure you supervise your site. It's your girl, Yo-Yo the House Lady. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully you were able to glean something from this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time with another video on all things real estate, all things real estate investing. Thank you so much.